Well, let's bring in our Monday panel of press gallery journalists. Susan Delacourt is a columnist and the Parliamentary Bureau Chief for the Toronto Star. Joelle Denis Bellavance is the Parliamentary Bureau Chief for La Presse. And John Iveson is a columnist for the National Post and Parliamentary Bureau Chief for Post Media. Good to see you all. Uh, lots to cover today in our conversation. Let, let's start with these new television ads. Uh, television and radio only in the province. Well, it's across country online in for a French audience, and it's in uh, Quebec on radio and television. It's Justin Trudeau saying only Liberals have, have been and will continue to stand up for the middle class. Joel Denis, I'll start with you on this. And he's taking particular aim at the end of the ad at just Conservatives. Nobody else that's campaigning in Quebec, just Andrew Scheer and Conservatives. How come? It, it's pretty telling uh, because we had two polls uh, last week showing that the Tories were ahead of the Liberals in Quebec. And uh, for, the last, for the longest time, the Liberals thought that Quebec was a fortress. And they've seen that maybe there are some cracks appearing in that fortress. And those ads that you talked about are, there's a, also a new one on the Champlain Bridge, which will open up in, within a week, a big ad saying, we delivered a bridge without a toll, as, uh, as opposed to the Conservatives. So I think they see I think it's some... it's open to traffic, like uh, July 1st, right? We, oh, yeah. Out of the day, it yeah, fully opens. It, it will put open in one way on the 24th right. of uh, June, saint jean Saint-Jean Saint-Jean Day. <laughs> They got and everything covered. Everything covered. All the bases and, covered. And so they want, clearly, see, they see the uh, Tories as being... Uh, and increasingly a threat in Quebec, and I think those ads explain mm -hmm. that. Susan, what do you think? Is that the, br the, the bridge over troubled water? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, they, they've been, as J.D. says, they've been pretty confident for the last four years that, you know, they may have trouble everywhere else, but Quebec was hanging with them. And I was waiting all day, uh, sort of watching to see what the Prime Minister and other leaders would say about the secularism bill passing. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if they might have been... Uh, they, They've come out against it, um, more or less. We'll always stand up for the charter, but they're being kind of careful, and that tells me too that um, that Quebec is becoming ever more important to them. And what do you think, John? Yeah, I agree. I mean, everything that they have done over the last four years, from Energy East, pretty much everything they've done has been geared towards seeing this road to victory through Quebec. And that, if that's threatened, then where does the road to victory come through? Maybe it, maybe it relies on Ontario. We've seen. Um, We've seen the, the, the Doug Ford phenomenon seemingly drag down Andrew Shear's numbers. So they still have high hopes there. I was speaking to, to um, Conservatives and Liberals last week who were saying that, that, that a teacher strike in Ontario, which may come into being in early September, uh, could be really damaging for the Conservatives just by association. By association. Yeah. Um, but it must be worrying for them. They seem to be almost knee-jerk reactions to, to various parties as these polls come out. I mean, the, the single-use plastics thing came very quickly on the heels of polls that showed the Green Party was starting to gain on them. So they, they're obviously very conscious of where, where their vulnerabilities lie. Yeah, I think, and they're not alone, right? The, you know, um, you look at the Green, Green Party numbers and then you look at what we saw this weekend, which is the NDP, Susan and Jagmeet Singh, essentially unveiling, you know, large portions of the of the platform well well ahead of an election campaign uh, in Hamilton Ontario because it's I think it's pretty clear that the, the road to, to power if there is one for the NDP isn't through Quebec uh, and, and, uh, anymore uh, but what, what, what do you make of the timing of that and why, why is why is Jagmeet Singh wanting to put out here's 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 the retail shop for for the NDP this far ahead of a vote yeah at the time I don't I can't recall a, a political leader or party putting out a platform this much in advance and that substantially. It was interesting what he chose to focus on was health care. Mm -hmm. There's lots and lots of other stuff in there. <clears throat> I think the perpetual thing that's said about Singh is he's not punching through. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, that he needs some bold and, <clears throat> and innovative measures. And uh, I've seen some comparisons today too. This is not Tom Mulcair in 2015, who at this time that in 2015 believed he might be Prime Minister. Right. And so they're not making any promises on deficit. Uh, they're not. Uh, they're not promising, you know, to be the responsible uh, NDP in government. They're just saying, <clears throat> let's go out there and do bold and. What, what do you th just to John? What do you think we're seeing here, John? Is, is this part of that? Look, we better get out and tell our story because right. other parties are starting to eat our lunch. Well, they're they're, they're telling their story for them. I mean, yeah. they're literally purloining their policies. We saw um, the, the first, uh, the, the affordability for uh, first time buyers today, which from the Liberal Party, which is, seems to be something that they, the NDP has been homing in on, the Pharmacare announcement. I mean, the only policy in that NDP platform that the Liberals wouldn't purloin was the call for a, a public inquiry into the SNC-Lavalin. <laughs> <Right. laughs> yeah. So I think that um, 
that Singh, he's not building a big tent here. This <coughs> is saving the furniture. So you, they're basically just making sure they're not becoming completely irrelevant to the conversation by coming out with, with policies before they're stolen by somebody else. But on Susan's point that, that it's early for the platform, in 2015, on the 23rd of Ju June, Justin Trudeau was starting to look like he was becoming irrelevant to the yep. conversation. The, the NDP were, had momentum. They were six points ahead of the Conservatives, and the Liberals were in third place. And he brought out this democratic uh, reform package, which at least got him mentioned. And I think that they kind of at least kept in the conversation, and by September it was a, a whole different ballgame. But I think that's what he's trying to do, keep being part of the conversation. What do you think, Jay? Well, if this, I think this was, was uh, an opportunity that was missed for the NDP, releasing that on a weekend while the Raptors celebration are still going on. And on the eve of the announcement on t Trans Mountain, I think if I had been an NDP strategist, I would have waited mid-August to get a bigger punch, bigger publicity. Now, didn't get much publicity out of it because... You know, on a weekend, uh, following the events that I just described was just, I think, uh, a missed opportunity for them. Let's talk about uh, the Trans Mountain Pipeline expansion decision coming tomorrow. What should we expect? I, I think we all expect them to approve it. It's their pipeline. They bought it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I, I do, I, I think it'll be interesting how they couch it. You know, they've been trying this middle line on we can be the environment and the economy all the way along. Hasn't worked out that well. Nobody actually sees this isn't a time when people see the, the connection between the two. So I think the, the way they frame it as something that can be environmentally conscious and, uh, and sensitive to the economy is going to be interesting because failure to approve it would inflame things more than they're already inflamed right. in the Federation. Do they, do they, you know, can they win this conversation, Sheldon? I mean, Susan points out, they're, I think they're really trying to do this two-track thing, right? We have, yeah, we're going to approve a pipeline, but look over here at C-69 and, and the tanker bill. And carbon tax. Carbon tax. We're doing all these environmentally responsible things, too, and yeah, we're going to have, we can match these two things together, the environment and the economy. No, they don't win any converts by doing that kind of uh, debate, I don't think, by combining a pipeline and saying they're fighting uh, uh, for the environment. And the approval is just a given, I think, because Bill Morneau, the finance minister, will be in Calgary on, th on, on Wednesday to explain, I think, the government's decision. It's funny because this morning I was following a truck that was, you know, publicizing, you know, the need to get this approval. And whatever the part of the campaign funded by Alberta, right? Exactly, and it's while he been, was on the Champlain <coughs> Bridge. <laughs> <laughs> but it's been uh, uh, the, the uh, government of Alberta has been raising, you know, the temperature on this file immensely, and I think the pressure is immense on Ottawa to say yes, but it will not provide any political uh, rewards for the Liberal Party either in Alberta or in British Columbia because they will. The anger is such in Alberta that there's nothing for them to recover. And in British Columbia, the opposition is still, you know, pretty high against that pipeline. It's been a polarizing conversation, John, on this. Does, does anything change with the approval of a pipeline? No, I don't think so. I think it's priced in. I mean, Bill Morneau Bill Morno better hope that they approve it if he goes to Calgary. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah. he's going to be hanging from the saddle dome by the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> but I think if they, does, if they do approve it, he doesn't get much kudos because I think it is priced into the equation already. So, um, you know, this is, uh, like Sue mentioned, they, they own this thing. Um, I think they well, might. Well, we actually own it. We, yeah, well, yeah, but they, yeah. we all own it. They so how it. come we don't know what they're going to do? <laughs> but but um, I think that one of the narratives that may come out is this Aboriginal involvement of, or Indigenous involvement in the ownership. There are one or two groups that are quite advanced in making claims. So they may end up coming out and saying, we're going we're to do this thing, and we're also putting it up for sale, and we have some interested buyers in the Indigenous community. Okay, what about Andrew Shear? Let's pivot to Andrew Shear's big climate announcement coming on uh, on Wednesday. Uh, what does he have to do? Well, um, it, it, it's a difficult time for him because, first of all, he has to somehow distinguish himself as a leading voice on this issue as opposed to the Premiers. And right now the Premiers have kind of mm -hmm. taken a lead on this. We know what he thinks already, no carbon tax. Mm -hmm. Um, what we don't know is can he get some of those people who would vote, uh, who, who vote for the environment or vote on climate change, could he lure them over to the Conservatives? Because he's going to need more than just the Conservative base to win right. the election. And um, I'm going to be watching again to see how he tries to couch those two things. He doesn't really have to prove his bona fides on 
on being against the carbon tax, but what he does have to do is prove that he believes in climate change and what he would do about it. Is that, is that really where we are with, with Andrew Scheer now? That the, I, I, you know, is there an appetite in the land now to be serious about this issue? Yes. And it can't just be, it's not going to be a carbon tax, I'll try some other things. It has to be a, a legit plan that says, I can get us to some real cuts in emissions with this plan. Yeah, and, and it has to be credible, it has to be sellable, it has to be simple to understand as well. And also it has to be um, good enough to pass the test in Quebec because in Quebec you see that they uh, are uh, pretty uh, adamant that we need something uh, you know, to fight climate change. And the Quebec caucus, the, the Quebec Tory caucus have been pushing very much Andrew Scheer's team to go uh, quite hard on the environment because they know that their future in Quebec depend on that announcement on Wednesday. And they've been working on that one for the last year, consulting groups to give it credible uh, uh, approval. So it remains to be seen whether this will satisfy anybody, but it's a big test for Andrew Scheer. John, Scheer's what do you think? It's well, I was surprised that, they, that uh, Scheer put out this little video last week uh, saying that there's going to be a, a, a real plan and uh, Justin Trudeau hasn't reached his is not going to reach his Paris targets, which suggests that Andrew Scheer's plan will reach the Paris targets, uh, which is going to be pretty hard going. We know from the, the, yeah. the PBO's report on the carbon tax last week that we are, we are nowhere near at, this, uh, at the current juncture. Right. I hope he does not uh, bring in some plan which is slightly bogus, where you're bringing in a different accounting method. You're saying that if you export low energy uh, exports that you get credit we're going to make our impact elsewhere in the world and yeah, claim credit it was, for it. It's a global yeah. impact. It's one big problem. So if we send over uh, low carbon fuel somewhere and it displaces coal, then we get the credit for that. That is not a thing. <laughs> it's not a, there's no accounting method that, 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 makes, that gives Canada credit for, that, for those exports. Okay, so what, let me stay with you. What, what is a thing, and very quickly, we've got a little over a minute left for all three of it, but uh, what is a thing? Is Justin Trudeau going to see Donald Trump on Thursday? Yeah, Thursday in Washington, what does he want? Yeah, I'm going with him, and I have no idea where we're going. <laughs> maybe I try to find out before you go. I maybe. think it's about China. It, it doesn't seem to be about the, uh, the trade deal because that's seemingly in the bag. So I think it's about trying to get our two... Canadians released from China. And what does he ask for, J.D.? What well, can he, what can, is Donald Trump ready to go to bat for Canada uh, with China while he's in the middle of a big trade conversation? You know, Mr. Trump is a leader who wants transactions. So what does Mr. Trudeau have to offer is for him to get some help? And it's a bit paradoxal that we, um, the prime minister, will be relying on Donald Trump to pursue a key foreign uh, de policy demand with China. So it, it, re to reach that point means a lot about the ca current situation between Canada and China. Yeah. Susan? Trudeau requested the meeting. Uh, I think he's trying to take advantage of the fact that things are pretty warm between the two leaders right now and seeing if he can use that warmth to get something on China. I don't think we're going to see anything on... I think he's going to go there and say, we're doing NAFTA, we're, you know, that's in progress, but I think the real reason is China. All right. Thank you all. We'll watch. Thank you.